Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and good morning everyone. So, um, can we start? Is it okay? Are you comfortable? Yes. Taking your breakfast already? No. Yeah. No? Oh, that means I expect few people to sleep. <laughs> so, okay. Um, hi, I am Zaleha. I am a professor of sustainability. Um, uh, just a little bit of introduction, yeah? Uh, well, first and foremost, welcome to the class. Yeah, this is not a specific class, this is an ethic class. So I will try my best to introduce a uh, concept of ethics and I will try my best to connect ethics with the contemporary. Yeah. So a little bit about my background. Um, I am, uh, my core when I did my uh, bachelor is accounting. But when I did my master is in law. When I did my PhD in uh, ethics and corporate governance. So if you ask me who you are, I don't know what I am. <laughs> it's a mixture of accounting, law and also management. So I find it's a good combination because we are actually in multidisciplinary era. Yeah. So uh, today I'm going to deliver my uh, to topic that I love a lot. Both combination of ethics, concept and also sustainability. Yeah, so I hope you enjoy it. And today, what I'm going to do is that, apart from my lecture, we're going to have a, um, a brief um, discussion. So I hope you all can just um, sit face each other and do the little bit of the case study. Yeah, ethics, we have to manage with the case study, otherwise you will forget about the concept. It is an abstract concept. Yeah. So um, thank you to the organizer for having me here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I enjoy ethics topic so much. Not many people uh, indulge in ethics because it's very abstract. Ethics is abstract because if you ask people what is ethics, they will give all sorts of definitions of ethics. Yeah, Because it's not law. It's not black or white. It's grey. So ethics is grey. It's you who make it white or it's you who make it black. Uh, that's the beauty of uh, ethics. And it's very so philosophical. Ethics is something... Um, only you know what you are and you know where you're going. And ethics, it, it, ethics is pure. It's been, uh, let me, allow me to, before, this is my topic, yeah, today I'm going to merge old and new. That's why I put here business ethics, moving towards sustainability business. You are all in business school, right? So you have to know, now where am I going with this ethics? A subject that I am learning. Yeah? It's not old, it's renewed, rebirth. You take the concept and you feed the concept into the modern society. The concept is always there. If you learn ethics, I have one and a half hours. I, I'm teaching this like um, 42 hours in Malaysia. You imagine 42 hours uh, combination into one hour, yeah? one and a half hours. But I'm going to give you the grounding of it, the underlying of this topic. Yeah? So, uh, can I have somebody um, just, you know, about 45 minutes, uh, give me a call? Just 45 minutes? Is it okay for you to give me a cue if it's 45 minutes already? So that I'm going to shift into my uh, case study. I don't want too long into my lecture. So what I'm going to say is, what I'm going to say is that now you are here, right? Okay. So you are taking a course. This is your course, ethics. Yeah. So in this course, you are in the business school. This is Gajah Mada. Yeah. So why this is important in business school? Because you are dealing with business. You are going to go out to build business, right? So this one, ethics, there are three uh, branches of ethics. Yeah? One is individual ethics, one is business ethics, another one is the, uh, the uh, more global ethics, the national ethics. So now you are taking a learning individual ethics combined with your business ethics and you are going to go to work and you are going to make decisions. So your decision is based on you as individual and your environment in business ethics. So that is what you are here, why you are here in business school. So that's why ethics is part of the business school syllabus. Okay. So uh, today what I'm going to do is then, I'm going to introduce, as I mentioned, 
as I mentioned, I'm going to introduce you to business ethics, but because we are going forward, the whole world, the whole world is going forward into sustainability. And academic and citizens of academic and academician in the academic institution must know about sustainability. Yeah, this is a hot topic about the whole world is looking into sustainability. What will happen if you are not in the sustainability arena? You will be left behind. It's moving very fast. In Malaysia, the public listed companies are moving very fast. So when I mention public listed companies, when I mention businesses, you will be in there. Therefore, it's very important for you to know and embrace and have knowledge about sustainability. So in business school, what more? This is actually one of the ultimate things that you have to think about. Yeah? So I cannot explain about sustainability too much because it will defeat the purpose of this class. So I'm going to connect how the old, that means the ethics thing, going forward into meeting this sustainability thing. Yeah? So what I'm going to introduce is that we are talking about ethics and how ethics guide sustainability business. The whole world is actually confused what sustainability is supposed to be. Yeah? So what sustainability is actually, it is equivalent to business ethics. Yeah? People forgot because we are looking into sustainability. But we are looking into sustainability as in how to be ESG. Yeah? How to meet that ESG. You know what is ESG? Yeah, I'm sure in business school you, you know uh, uh, sustainability concept already. So economic value, social value, and governance value, ESG. But the businesses of today, what they do is that they are looking into the system which is uh, larger, loudly dominant by capitalism. So capitalism is talking about profit maximization. This is accounting. So when you talk about profit maximization, early days in the BC time, yeah, during the uh, Socrates, Aristotle, Plato, they already discussed that. Yeah? One thing you got to know the concept is that stakeholder theory. You heard about stakeholder theory? Have you heard about stakeholder theory? Stakeholder theory, 1980s, uh, 70s by Friedman. Friedman said 1976 that when you do business people, you do not make ethics. Yeah? Because statement, uh, Friedman, he's a very good, intelligent guy. He was one of the earliest person who actually bring in the topic of business. He said in the history of stakeholder, I'm sure you all, if you go back and learn about stakeholder, eh? Every business student must know about theory of stakeholder. It's a must. Yeah? So stakeholder theory, 1970s, I'm going to go to history of ethics a little bit later, but I'm now I'm going to focus on why business ethics is important and what happened with business since 1970s and forward. Because the system that majority of us follow is capitalism. Yeah? Capitalism brings things straight that you cannot mix ethics with business. Otherwise, you won't be profitable. So that thought creates an environment where people in business say, hey, no, no. The minute you include ethics, you cannot get profit. So that is the system of business in the whole world. Yeah? So the people, businessmen, People making decisions in business, they believe that, hey, no, if I start making ethics in, I start bringing ethics in, ethics will spoil the profitability. We cannot get profit. So what is the uh, reason for doing business when we don't have profit? So who brought the idea? Friedman, 1976. He said, do not mix them together. Otherwise, you won't be making business. So there's argument from Freeman who say that, hey, look, guy, when you are doing business, you are making your company, right? This is your company. Where is the company? Gajah Mada is university here, around you. Businesses, right? So when you are business, you are sitting in a 
come a, a place and this place is you are actually uh, sitting on a, a place platform belong to the citizen belong to the society so theory of social contract said yeah theory of social contract is another popular theory nowadays business uh, 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 business actually are stepping into my area you are taking this platform to do business but the, the, that platform that land belong to us because you are sitting on my land now you do business you get profit you don't give it to me and i am actually having the uh, the negative effect of the business imagine you have a factory here what will happen to you day by day you are inhaling the uh, carbon monoxide right carbon dioxide whatever uh, uh, things uh, chemical i'm i'm facing so these people this bunch of people said look business people you are actually taking our living our sustainability living before we can live long now we cannot live long why because you are making us sick so on that capacity you have obligation to us the society so you see the transition from the theory of stakeholder from the theory of shareholder we are moving into theory of social contract before we always concern about business being business getting profit for the shareholder that is theory of shareholder then we are moving into stakeholder where Friedman said look okay lah i understand you uh, want something from us we have our profit we are sharing with you but when we share our sharing is only limited to people connected with us business okay who are these people the stakeholder who actually directly connected with us so they actually uh, um privilege to have to share our profit yeah but now the whole world another transition the whole world is saying look business you cannot share with stakeholder only because we are actually living your negativity you have pollution you have everything and we are connected with it so the theo- the society say we want share we want that sustainability promise us you make that sustainability living for us so you see the business theory are actually changing from being very uh, scope to shareholder to scope to stakeholder and to scope to the society this is why you all have to know so if you learn whatever subject accounting or at economy or entrepreneurship you have to know that theory of business is changing yeah now where does ethics come in as i mentioned when earlier time when you uh, business start diverting from ethics they go very much into economic value very much they believe that oh business is only profitability but now because the transition of the industrial era the transition of business thinking about sustainability as i mentioned earlier the theory of evolution of theory we realize that ethics is coming back so you are in the right platform and i'm very very happy that global summer uh, international week is conducting and including ethics as one of the subject to be uh, highlighted in the conference why because it's about time because that's a, that's the reason i mentioned ethics is sustainability business and sustainability business is ethics yeah so if you want to be sustainable if you want go out there in the companies you have to be ethical now this is how my uh, only what my uh, topic going to be yeah topic i'm going to have uh, to introduce you how do i here is it so i'm going to introduce you to this whole topic yeah same like me lah going towards my retirement already so this is all topic but I'm going to bring and connect this old topic to business ethics and I'm going to bring fundamental ethics theory as I mentioned the one that the theory that guides you towards being ethical in making decision and then I'm going to guide you towards why you have to do so because business model are changing 
So if you go out there in the companies when you go work, yeah, your view and your thinking and your decision making has to change. Yeah, you have to know that people are talking about sustainability not from the perspective of economic value only. Yeah. So if I may ask today, what is the most ethical thing that you have done today in the morning before you come to us, Claire? Any uh, ethics things that you believe you have done today? Hmm? Anything that you feel, hey, I'm doing something good today? Anything? I guess I came early yesterday. You came early? Yes. Yeah, that is actually good conduct, right? Yeah, be proud of that. You came early compared to yesterday was not ethical, yeah? <laughs> Today is ethical. Yeah, at least improve, you are looking into sustainability. Hmm? So what else did you do good yesterday? Anything you do good yesterday or you don't do good anything? Uh, 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 not yesterday, not day before? Do you good, do good in, yesterday? Uh, <laughs> what is it? No, no. no I don't, yes, oh, yesterday. I, I don't know if it's ethical, but I helped the door from someone at the hotel building. That's a good thing, isn't it? You believe that that is a good thing, right? So, it is a good thing. So, at least you did that yesterday. This morning, you haven't done anything? I was in a rush, so I ah, So, no ethical <laughs> things, yeah. So, you haven't done your good things yet. No, uh, so, yeah, it will come today. Yeah. We have 24 hours. You have until 12 o'clock, midnight to do so. So, you see, every day we are dealing with that, right? But from what perspective? Yourself. So, now, you have to move forward to go into companies. Imagine you are in the company. So what do you do? When people talk about ethics, uh, ethics, yeah, I don't know. As long as I don't do wrong, no uh, police come to me and handcuff me, I'm okay. Right? So this is what people think. If it's not legal, it's not illegal, then I'm okay. Uh, so that is the class today. Is it okay? Am I okay? If it's okay, what basis do I say it's okay? But the only thing is that I'm not going to go into individual ethics because that's very different. I'm going to go to business. So is this business okay? Am I doing the right way? Um, is it acceptable? You say it's not okay, but I say it's okay. So I think it's right. You are not saying it's right. It's up to you. So that is what our decision making about this class today. Yeah. So that is what business is all about. Why is very concerned? Why is it become important today in this era? Because the whole world is going into one direction. Sustainability living. We are not looking economic value. We are looking into two other elements. Social governance. Yeah. So when you are talking about social and governance, as United Nations said, Brundtland Report, go to Brundtland Report of Sustainability United Nations, you learn about why sustainability become prominent today. Yeah, this is additional. It's not one and a half hours, but it's additional. Learn. The reason being because we, the generation, especially my generation, yeah, we are so obsessed with economic value, profit, 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 day and night, that we have abused the environment. So now who's facing it? Guys, you are facing it. Who gets the profit? My era. My generation. They suck up all the profit, then we die. We leave the mess to you. Oh, you deal with the environment. We are okay. Yeah? So that is the reason you become activists and say like Greta, Rekha Tanberg, huh? hey, look people, you pay for it. You are the one who actually, your hands is dirty. Your hands are dirty. So when your hands are dirty, before you die, you better uh, sort this thing out. That's why I'm here today. Yeah? Giving, um, do the ethical things. Giving knowledge so that I can die in peace. Yeah? You, I give you knowledge already, so you do it. Okay? I'm done. So I will leave the world in a very nice place. So you face like the ESG. Yeah? So that's why we are giving you, hey, people, new generation, believe in ESG, do the right thing, because we have, do, we have done the wrong thing. Now you do the right thing for whom? For your generation. Yeah? Because in 1990, I read one book, the person, the author said, 
businesses is business is monster they are monster they eat and eat and eat and live on economic value that they forgot society they forgot how to behave well they forgot to be ethical simple very simple why because the capitalism system has created the thinking that profit is priority ultimate forget about society forgot about being ethical be profitable yeah that's the reason we have a comeback of ethic so that is what it is all about now my first slide yeah my first slide is talking about ethics as philosophy so if you talk about accounting you talk about business uh, business study if you talk about management if you talk about uh, whatever topic what are the topics you learn entrepreneur lagi you forgot what you learn guys topic that you learn finish any lectures here you're going to get penalized topic subject subject that you learn the course that you're taking uh, apart from business ethics that one is my part Ah, human resource. Sama? Managerial accounting. Sama? Sup- yeah, supply chain. All those are just th- uh, secondary. The philosophy is ethics. That's why you are in business school. Ethics is core. Then you go and learn supply chain. You go and learn um, uh, whatever subject. Accounting, management, entrepreneur. But the most important is ethics. The philosophy starts with ethics. Simple, what does it mean? Do the right thing. This is ethics all about. Do the right thing. Okay? So that's why my topic is actually looking into do the right thing for businesses. Why business need to do the right thing? Because they want to make decisions rightfully. Because they want to do good conduct whatever that may mean they want to be um, outer driven not just internal driven yeah think about others not about oneself that's the reason ethics is known as behavior moral standard so ethics is actually guiding people to act uh, rightfully and to know what is wrong yeah ethics is what people who believe in moral value i'll come uh, to a slide where they explain about moral and also ethics and also law yeah so in a country we have to have all we have to have black and white so the black and white is looking into the black and white is looking into um three things ethics law morality so you as a business person i'm think i'm assuming you are business manager i'm not assuming you are students yeah if i believe you are student then i'm going to be very uh, shallow in my teaching today i'm taking you in uh, assuming you are business manager you are in a business uh, organization and you're making business decision okay so when uh, you are a business manager First thing first when you go into business law what are the uh, legal and illegal thing as a business manager what is it the black and white black means no right means yes don't do punishment that's it so who has to bear company got to bear that's why when you are business manager people you have to be let now in business uh, what's your name uh, ito ito now in business ito what is the good thing that you have to do legal perspective uh, to do based on the regulation exactly what are, uh, give me sample of a regulation uh, pay the tax exactly oh, you spot on that's it the government should like you yeah because tax you don't do tax you gone in business there are a lot of cases in our prime minister najib raza i'm sure you know about him yeah, very popular guy you right uh, so he actually one of the um, um, uh, legal perspective that they uh, they put him in behind is because of the tax 
Yeah, Al Capone, 1930s. You heard about Al Capone? Uh, that's my time. Yeah, sorry. Uh, 1930s. Uh, so that's my time. So the 1930s, Al Capone, he's the mafia of all time. He killed people. Killed. Please watch Al Capone. In my class, I like uh, my class starts with watching movie. So my student in my class, they always watch movies. The next day, they don't prepare. They come and talk about the movie. Obviously, we connect with the subject lah. But they watch movie. They go out. They see people. They said, learn from the book. That's why they enjoy my class, yeah? So, when you talk about Al Capone, he killed a lot of people. I think you all know about Al Capone, right? The master of uh, all sorts of things, the unethical and the legal, the illegal, everything he did. They, catch, uh, they couldn't catch him. He killed so many people. He did so many gambling, casino, whatever. They cannot catch him. But they caught him with one reason. Did not pay tax. Yeah? When he did not pay tax, they caught him there because it's visible, it's evidence-based. So that's the reason uh, tax, legal. Yeah. What is the illegal thing that company normally do? Illegal? Corruption, exactly. That is my research topic. Yeah. Corruption. Corruption is my research topic. But I, I, uh, I, I gave up too many, too many uh, samples in Malaysia. So we say, okay, i done. Too many things. I cannot cope anymore. I'm going to retirement. So go do corrupt. Yeah. I'm going back to ethics. Yeah. That's the reason I switched from corruption to ethics. Yeah. Because I remember people ask me, uh, "What is your area? Corruption? Huh? <laughs> they think I'm doing it, not do researching it. Yeah. Huh? Really? Is that your forte? Yeah, yeah. Without realizing, I'm talking uh, uh, illegally. Yeah, yeah. That's my forte. Corruption? Really? <laughs> I say, hey, look, I'm doing the research, okay? I'm not dealing anything with corruption. But that is actually the biggest devil. When, one of the things that I read is that when people ask, when corruption starts, huh? how come people born and become corrupt early days? They say, it's, it's, um, they always say that it's old as prostitution. The oldest profession is corruption and prostitution. Imagine, business comes later, but corruption comes first. So what can we do? But this is not a topic of corruption, perhaps later. But this is topic of legal. So when you business manager, guys, law, legal, or illegal, that's it. Clear cut. You know, the first thing I ask you, Ito, you mentioned that, you know, pay tax. Don't pay tax, then you're going to be ill. You're going to suffer for it. Fine, jail, whatever, both. Then you say illegal means corruption. Yeah, but we're going to come to a section where corruption might be acceptable. Yeah, uh, that's another section. Yeah, you can. You, when people say, yeah, Prof. Zalia say it's acceptable. Yeah, so I can do corruption. Little bit, not much. Yeah, that's why a lot of people corrupt, they get away with it yeah? because there's technical issue in it. But corruption can be good. Beginning, they call it positive corruption. Yeah, not so bad. Positive corruption. So if you get caught, oh, I'm doing positive corruption. It's okay. Just it's positive thing, you know. It's acceptable. Yeah. But we're going to come to a way, a section where uh, it's acceptable. It's not legal, but it's acceptable in certain countries. But that does not mean you can do it. Yeah, there are circumstances, there are situational. But I'm going to. But don't take. Is it recorded? Gone. There goes my career. <laughs> Gone. Lucky thing I got my professorship already. Otherwise, I'm out. No, it's acceptable, but we, you have to learn about it. Don't think, oh, I can, oh, today, we very lucky we're in business school, we can do corrupt. Don't. Yeah, uh, don't. This is a record, yeah? Don't. Yeah. But you got to uh, know and learn, and you have to do research. There are studies shows that we have positive corruption and we have de uh, negative corruption. Most of it negative. Now it's negative. No way you're going to do positive. Positive is the earlier age of the government where they make corruption to initiate something. Yeah, But that is very difficult for you to justify. There's the process where you to learn. They call positive. Research have done that. But only few research. So when you compare to the many research, corruption is bad. Yeah? And when the government made the corruption as a crime, 
then definitely a no. -no. Yeah, don't go and say unless you go to a country who's acceptable. But can you say it's acceptable? Yeah, we will come to a section where it is acceptable, but it's within that community. It's not when you go out from the community. So like it or not, it's not good. Yeah, no, please uh, uh, edit that. Yeah. So now, ethics. Where do I put ethics? On top. Ethics actually create legal perspective. Ethics, conduct. Is, what is ethics? Do the right thing. Action. It's action. You do the right thing. When you do the right thing, you do and do and do, number of years, with society will, with, you learn law? Do you learn law? In your subject? Do you learn law? Oh, okay, I'm going to teach a little bit of law. Yeah? Society will means, uh, how do I say, semangat society. That if society believe in something, like Green uh, Greta, Greta, she's an activist, environmental activist. She believes in environment. And she believes that supposed to be law. So, whatever she says, she fought for it for many years. And some of her words yeah, become legal. They become law. Yeah, United Nations take it, make it initiative, and some countries have already made it into law. So society wills making norms. That means you are doing it again and again and again until until it's acceptable, and someone push it. Normally the the minister and all that push it to the parliament, and they turn it into law. Yeah, and that norms that norms is actually ethics. And what is this? Do the right thing. Again, go back to society's will. Society accept it, they push it, and it becomes law. Okay, but we have another one, morality. Morality is inside, inner. I believe this is right. Yeah? So when I believe this is right, I just believe in it. But I don't act upon it. Until you act upon it, of your belief, it becomes do the right thing. Yeah? Then you can get it. You believe. What do you believe in? Inside you, telling you what? Don't go, Kla. Uh, <coughs> ah, you believe in religion. I'm sure majority of us believe in religion, right? That is called divine law. Yeah? You believe in the certain part of the religion, right? When you believe in something about the religion, then it's inside you. But then when you translate it, it becomes conduct, right? So when you become conduct, it becomes ethics. Do the right thing. I believe in something and I become, make it happening, visible, the one that I believe inside, and it becomes conduct. Therefore, I think that's the right thing. So I actually align my belief with my conduct. Yeah? That is one, the difference between morality, ethics, and law. This is black and white. This is grey. Not even grey, you can't see it. This is grey. You see whether do the right thing or don't do the right thing. Okay? So that is the basic concept when you want to learn ethics. Understand? Is it clear? It's not abstract anymore, right? So now, don't give excuse, huh? Oh, I'm doing the right thing. Uh, uh, okay, I, I steal a computer. Oh, I'm just being ethical, you know. I do the right thing. I steal computer, but that's what I believe. Mm. You give that answer to the policeman, see where, okay, come here, jail. Mm? So the, it has to be bounded by these three elements. You believe in you, okay, fine. You believe Robin Hood. Believe in what? If uh, theft and then poor people, right? But the legal say, no thief, thief. Huh? So, whatever he believes in is wrong for the legal perspective. So, you see, so sometimes you have to make the difference between you and the world outside there. Don't live in a bubble. Everything is right thing. Oh, thief is okay. Corruption is okay. I do this, is okay, because that's what I believe in. But remember, you are working in an organization where they are bounded by 
rules and regulation. So people, business people, managers, you are in working, you are in the territory of making decision. Now, why I need to learn ethics in business school? Why? Because guys, ethics lead you to a very big thing in ethics learning. What is DM? Not that, huh? Don't DM or PM me, no. It's decision making. That's what business is all about. Making decision, right? What's your name? Nabila. Nabila, if you are a manager in a company, what would be the decision that you think best for the company? Ethically? Uh, to be honest. To be honest. honest. What is your product? You imagine, assuming you are doing? Cosmetic, yeah, that's very important. When you, you don't want to people to wear your cosmetic and become different from what it usually is, right? So definitely you have to be honest. What way that you have to think about, make decision in order to translate that honesty? Um, ingredients. Ingredients. It can be harm, harmful or harmless, right? If you put Clorox, what will happen to the face? Try to put Clorox and say, I want profit. Clorox is cheaper than, you know, those kind of uh, scientific cream. So I put a little bit of Clorox. One day become fat. Hmm? But is that ethical? Definitely no. Because why? It actually uh, hurt people. So that is not the right thing, you're right? Uh, so you have to make decision. Now your decision is... This is what business person always think about. Decision, decision, problem. When you are consumed by capitalism system economy, you think about what more than what? What's your name? Uh, Nick. Nick. You think about what more than what, Nick? Imagine you have a business. What do you want? Uh, so to make sure that uh, my employees are motivated. Okay, motivated in terms of your ambition? Okay. You're very good. Please work in my company because you think about the employee. Or well, let hire me for the well, become the employee. Well basically I'm I'm interested in profit maximization. But oh, Nick. I know that oh. that without a good position for my workers they won't be motivated and therefore they're uh, like they won't be very efficient. Yeah. In terms of that. Uh, Okay. What's your name? I don't remember you mentioned. My name is Casper. Casper. Yeah. Casper, when you do business, what is the ultimate motive that you would do business for? Uh, a lot of money. Profit? A lot of money. Okay. I don't want, uh, because 51 of you, I cannot ask one by one. I'm going to ask you, anyone do want to do business other than profit? Hands up, please. I fail here. You want, what do you aim for? Uh, solve problem, problem, but at the end, what do you want when you make decision to do business? <laughs> right? That's it. Anyone don't think about profit when you do business? Any uh, good people? Any ethical people? You don't want profit? I'm not working with you. Uh, so, uh, so how about for business? Is this a business? Yeah, I don't think if I have a club, I don't need any profit. Oh, please ask David Beckham. Well, David Beckham, can you play football? But I don't pay you. David Beckham say, oh no, thank you very much. I'm going to Milan. Huh? So what is it that at the end, it will go to even sports. Uh, sports actually one of the trouble area now. Yeah, Even sports. We have a case in Malaysia also connected with corruption. Even sports, unless you are in NGO. Now, NGO is also making different, uh, they are going not to profit, but they still thinking about how can I survive. Yeah, sustainable business. So even sports are doing into profit. Yeah, so now people, when you make business decision, it's all going down to 
profit. The only thing is that earlier in the class I mentioned theory are changing, evolving. Now they are expanding their intention. But at the end, we are talking about decision making. The only difference now is that after this class, your entire life, you are going to focus on another element. Ethical decision making. Yeah, please be good after this. We want to be in heaven, right? So, ethical decision making. You don't go sell cosmetic, putting chloros inside. Yeah? So, and you don't go, you know, do unnecessary stuff to reduce the cost of your business because you want more profit. Yeah? At the end, you can have more profit. Does not matter. It has to be ethically made decision. Okay? But the hardest part in this whole wide world Unless you are, please tell me where in the place where in the world that you can be really, really good. Eh? I don't know where. Yeah? It has to be grounded by ethical reasoning. So you want to be ethical, you want to make ethical decision making in business. You have to have one process before that. It's called ethical reasoning. What is your reasoning? Imagine you are in board of director. Yeah? Then you say, oh, we cannot. A, a CEO, chairman, you cannot do that. It's not good. What will happen to you? Okay, go off. Please permit yourself to go out because we want profit. That is our ultimate reason why we do business, right? So you have to make sure your CEO or your chairman also are in the line with you, making ethical decision. Yeah, I'm not. What does ethics mean? Doing the right thing, right? So this is the principle of doing the right thing. You have to make ethical decision making. Why? Why? Because you want to be sustainable. Yeah. Now, how to do the right thing? How to make decision the right way? How to make decision the ethical way? One thing, reasoning. And now, why are you making reasoning? This one is subjective. Data slide. Because you want to make ethical judgment. That's it. Business managers. You want to make ethical judgment. Why? It's very important because you want to have, especially nowadays, sustainable business. That's it. Very simple. Is it not simple to do business? Follow the right path. Make ethical reasoning before that. Make ethical decision. Why? Because you want to make ethical judgment. Now, business. What is it that you need? You need two most important things. In a business, you need two things. One, uh, institutionalized ethics. And one is interstitial, one is um, integration ethics. Here, institutionalize. How do you do when you want to have an ethical company? You make it formal. You have guidelines, you have code, you have uh, uh, principle. You have everything that relate with going do the right thing. That means ethical. You believe that company is supposed to be formally recognized by others, internal, external, international, that you are going to the do the right thing. Okay. Then internalize. When you internalize, mean you are going to your employee and make the employee be in that culture of uh, uh, doing the right thing. That's it. Two things only. 
So once you know already now how to make decision, why are you doing ethics in order to achieve the ethical company, yeah, doing the right thing, then how do you do it? Two process. One, you internalize. One, you internalize. Internalize. Make the culture in your company ethical. Internalize. Make it visible to the others you are doing ethical things. That's all. As why? Because you are the person who determine the right thing. Because simply because you are making business ethical decision making. That's all. Okay? Now, next. This is why ethics is important. Research shows that if you are ethical, you get premium. That means you put your share price will be higher. Why? Because people like to uh, uh, invest in companies who are ethical. I don't want to invest in companies who are not ethical. Yeah, I want definitely I want to invest in companies who are ethical because I believe it gives me goodwill, and I feel happy. I feel happy because as we go back to the concept of ethics earlier on in the Western part of ethics, Aristotle say when you do ethical thing, you find happiness. Yeah. So that is what we want to achieve, happiness. So if I want to invest, definitely I want to make me happy. Unless you say, oh, my happiness is when I have the ting, 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 day and night. But that is your ethical thing. You believe it's ethical. It's not wrong to gain profit. It's not wrong at all. It's the ultimate motive for, I don't want to do business without profit, but it has to be guided by your ethical belief. So ethical decision making normally we uh, guided by three things: utilitarianism, justice theory, and deontology. This is the common three theories that apply when you make ethical decision making. So your ethical reasoning is bounded by these three elements. What is uh, utilitarianism? Utilitarianism is telling you that greatest good for greatest number. Have you heard about it? No? Yeah, it's very common, yeah? Right? So, greatest good, greatest number say, if you want to make decision, you have to think about this way. You can make profit. What is the greatest good? Greatest good, if I make profit, the more profit I make, employee will be happy, society will be happy because I'm giving to the society as well. The, uh, the nation will be happy because GDP will go up. Yeah, so that is greatest good because there are a lot of people. But definitely, I have to compromise a little bit on my decision making. Why? Because more people will get good benefit compared to these small people will get uh, affected by it. So utilitarianism believe in that. If you want to make profit and you have to a bit bend your behavior, your conduct, you're doing the right thing, let be it. So you are guided by that decision making. For example, I'm guided, my company is fabric. I say, oh my God, if I do cost in the US, the cost of labor going to go up high. Because cost of labor in US, very high. Yeah? So now I say, what do I do at the decision making? I call my people, you all, come make decision with me. What is the ethical decision making that I have to do? Okay, we outsource. What do we do? We go to Bangladesh. Outsourcing. This is the decision making. Yeah, that's why I say ethics is actually the ultimate of all the business costs. costs. Because we have entrepreneurship, you have uh, human uh, resource, you have... Yes? Oh, okay. Oh gosh, I'm way behind. I will speed up. So when you make decision making, thank you for that, Casper. Uh, uh, when you make decision, you have to think about good for greatest number. Which one benefit more? Yeah, so decision making won't say you are wrong if you make that decision. I make 100 people happy compared to 3 people who's not happy. I make doing the right thing. You cannot judge me for doing wrong thing. I have to outsource in order to get Bangladesh uh, people, child, do work, but a lot more people happy because they have living. They can survive. Okay? Justice theory. I believe in justice, equality for everybody. That's your right. Nobody is going to say you're wrong. I'm not giving bonus to anyone because being justice, everyone uh, fair. No bonus today, yeah? Because CEO, no bonus, uh, employee, no bonus. 
I'm being fair. Nobody say you're wrong. And then deontology, sorry, deontology said, hey, look, is, you go to the police station. Now, I, ask, uh, I will come to a case today. Uh, I go to a police station and then, uh, uh, no, I go to a mall. And then there's a shooting going on. A shooting referring to me, police, shoot uh, terrorists in that mall. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I should human being, guys. I'm your employer. I should. Uh, so uh, I'm the. Uh, you are the chief of police. Now I come back, <laughs> chief. I just kill a person in <laughs> shopping mall. Am I wrong? You're. I'm wrong. Why? Why am I wrong? Situation. What situation? I just kill people. For the greater good. Is he trying to kill other people? Does he have a weapon with him? In that case, yes. Makes sense. I cannot say you are wrong because you are saying utilitarianism. Yes, Casper? Uh, William. William. Yeah. Oh, Casper, my God. See, you look, yeah, you are twins brothers. Yeah. <laughs> William. Uh, I couldn't hear everything, but uh, you saved a lot of people. Yeah. Like, See? Oh, it's the same. Okay. Reasoning. Same reasoning. You save a lot of people. But I mentioned I'm a policeman. So, yeah, but why? Why is it acceptable? What is policeman's duty? Yes, and that's my duty. My duty is to protect the people. So, actually, go back to duty obligation. So, if you say it's my duty, it's not wrong for me to act that way, it's the right thing to do. So we have three now, yeah? Just now we mentioned utilitarianism. I make decision based on majority benefit from it. Another thing, everybody is equal. And then another thing is my duty. Guys, don't go and uh, start shooting around and just say, oh, my duty, do it, yeah? Don't. This is duty when you have the authority. That means your cap is different, yeah? And then, that's it. That is the principal reasoning that you have to combine in order to make decision. Why is it important nowadays? Because, guys, I 10 minutes. I'm extending a little bit. <laughs> because we are going into a world of chaos business environment. Why we are doing that? Because we are, actually, those days, I'm looking into VUCA only. But now, we are looking into this. Why? Because... The world is going crazy. It's so volatile, it's so uncertain, it's so complex, it's so ambiguous. Do you agree? Today you make share price, tomorrow something says something about the Prime Minister, suddenly share price go down. Isn't it? So volatile. I'm, I'm confused. Even in gender, I'm confused. Men, women, uh, uh, he, she, I don't know. Yeah? And believe me, I made mistakes few times. Yeah? I go and hug, I go and salam, I go and oh man, oh God. <laughs> Done. Because I don't know. It's uncertain. Even to the extent of gender. Because equality. We cannot say it's not right. You cannot say it's not right. It's their right. Yeah? And it's ambiguous. Complex. So business decision become this. 2000 onwards, it become even worse. It's so brittle. Today your country will be okay, tomorrow bankrupt. Greece, example. Yeah? Today you are okay, suddenly uh, things different the next day. Because disaster, COVID, one day, gone, the whole world, chaos. Yeah, the world is so non-linear. It's not like this anymore. It's like this. Yeah, learn about this. This very interesting, very interesting uh, inter uh, thing to know about the world today. Your generation, mine going off. Yeah. So why? Because industrialization. We are moving for profit, 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 but sustainable business. 1.0 people are digitalized doing digitalization. Yes, everything everything is AI, AI digitalized. But sooner we are in the verge of going to industry 5.0. Please go into 5.0, yeah. 
your business school, you should know ahead of time. We are going to 4.0, where sustainability business is priority. Therefore, you have to make ethical sustainability business. Not only sustainability, ethical, because people are moving. Yeah? So, ethics, we have to balance ethics and other things. Not uh, only at profit, but other things. And because there's no standard in the world, one standard rule, we have to adjust to the situation as long as there's ethical behavior. So these are the businesses facing dilemma. Action that are good and legal. No problem, good, legal, done. Action that are bad and illegal. I, uh, I do product in my company. I do business, sustainable business, uh, producing drugs. I can do that because it's acceptable in Colombia, right? You can do business, but illegal, and it's bad. Okay, so you got to think, this is the dilemma of today. Uh, and then, uh, action that are legal but bad. Example, action illegal, illegal but bad. Quick, quick, guys. Yes, please, William. Very good. Exactly. It is good business. But you view is bad. But you are some dabi. Hey, I'm doing good apa. Oh, some dabi plantation will say, this is good. Because it's business, they're helping others. But it is bad ethically because it's deforestation. So who's facing it? Your generation. Yeah? Mine okay. <laughs> we 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 gain already. Yeah. So they are good but illegal. Good but illegal. Example, guys, I forgot about this side. Example, good but illegal. Good? Hey, how come good become illegal? Hmm? Example, yes. Um, in Indonesia, we consumption for sick people is illegal. Consumption for sick people. We consumption for sick. People. Like cancer. Oh yeah, got it, got it. Thailand make it legal already. We let us go to Thailand. Yeah. Because yeah, Thailand accepted. But Indonesia, Malaysia also not accept uh, not accepting it. It is good. It is actually a cure of sickness, illness and scientific proof already. But it's illegal. Why? Because Malaysia and Indonesia believe in that the uh, greatest good for greatest number. Yeah, so that's reasoning, make that decision making. Very good example. So these are the dilemma that you managers have to face. Okay, case study. Now we are going, William. So case study, I think you have three case study. Okay, one to five. Can you uh, do a group number one? Yeah, so that means you do uh, four, four, number two. Okay, number three, number four, number five. Done. Okay, so you can turn, but all the way, 4%, 4% become number two, uh, number three. One, two, three. Yeah. Faham? So, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Boleh? You do it in a group. So, if you say, I want to five people in one group, it's okay. As long as you do number five. So, if you want to combine or you want to break up into two groups, but number four. Boleh? Uh, five minutes, is that Okay. Okay, to make it quick, um, Casper, can you come up please? And also, um, what's your name? Rafa. Come up please, Rafa. We do uh, acting. Uh, no, this is the time, yeah. Uh, I want you here. Oh, yeah, 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 but I gotta read the case, right? Uh, sorry? I have to read the case. Right? Uh, we're going to do role play. Rafa? Okay, role play. Okay, ah. so I don't have to prepare anything. No, no, no need to prepare. Okay. Just pre uh, prepare. Uh, is it okay? Yeah. Okay, now, I'm going to be the narrator. Rafa is going to be um, Fanucci. Casper uh, is going to be Karl Swarovski. Okay? Karl Yeah. Okay. Casper, okay. Karl Swarovski, Rafa, uh, Fanucci, me, narrator. Yeah? I do the list week. Now, I'm going to read. Carefully think about the case. Situation. In a company. Between Rafa and... Uh, between uh, Fanucci and Kawaski. In an environment, in a meeting. Narrator. 
Jir Fanuji, manager of a moderator, moderately a large department store, was worried. So, Fanuji, manager, worried. Shrinkage in the costume jewellery department had continued to rise for the third consecutive month. Three months dropped. Okay. In fact, this time it had nearly wiped off the department net profit in series. In scale. Worst, it couldn't be attributed to damage or improper handling of markdown or event to shoplifting. The only other possibility was in-house theft. Yeah? Fanucci ordered Chief of Security Matt Kazwalski to instruct his security people to keep a special eye on jewellery department employees as they went about their business. So she also instructed those packages, purses and other container employees con carried with them to be searched. When work, workers left the store, when this measure failed to turn up any leads, Kawaski suggested they hire a couple of plain courts officers to observe the store guard. Fanucci agreed, but still nothing turned up. Now, Kawaski. Yeah. Yep. We're going to have to install Rafa, Rafa. a hidden camera at the checkout station in the jewelry department. Kawaski? Uh, no, I, okay. <laughs> I don't know. It won't. <laughs> okay. This is a uh, rehearsal. Start again. Okay, Kawaski, Fanucci, Kawaski, Fanucci, gone. Kawaski, Fanucci. Oh yeah, now it's easier to read. Okay. okay. Okay, we go one by one. That's good. Okay, so you know your role? Yeah. Uh, okay, you start. We're going to have to install a hidden camera at the checkout station in the jewelry department. I don't know. It won't be cheap, but you don't want this problem spreading to other departments, do you? One other thing, I think we should install some microphones in the restrooms, stock room, and employee lounge. You mean snoop on our own employees? We could pick up something that could crack this thing wide open. But what if our employees found out? How would they feel being spied on? And then there's the public to consider. Who knows how they'd react? Why they'd probably think that if we are spying on our own workers, we were surely spying on them. No, Matt. Frankly, the whole approach troubles me. Okay, Mrs. Fanucci. But if it was my store... No. You're the boss. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Casper. Thank you, Rafa. So this is a decision-making in business, guys. Fanucci and Kawaski, very good acting. Yeah? Inshallah, oh, you'll be one of the best uh, awarded uh, actors in, uh, in the whatever award ceremony. So this is business organization, making decisions. Yeah? One say, this is happening, our issue. One say, this is not right when you want to suggest. So now, make your decision. Question one, question two, question three, question four, question five. Take one leader to speak up the decision. Okay? <laughs> We need one leader to speak up your decision. Okay, guys, I have to stop you all. I have to stop because we have limited time. Now, number one. Guys, number one. If oh, the others can see what they say, yeah? If you were Jean Panucci, which Casper was, eh, sorry, uh, Rafa was, how would you feel about your decision to order the installation of viewing and listening device? What other option do you have? Did she overlook any moral co uh, consideration? Now, three things. One is how this is before the conduct decision making. Yeah, to, uh, how do you feel about the decision making, guys? 
Others listen and see how they, they make the decision. They are business managers. Okay, so first of all, we agreed that spying on your employees wouldn't be a morally or ethically correct decision, so we wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into what options we uh, other options we had. And here we talked about one could be conducting like harsher interviews, like in kind of a sense an interrogation with your employees. In that sense, you would be able to maybe get out some information, but in a setting where the employee is aware themselves that they're being interviewed, so it's like with with um, uh, consent okay. uh, instead of them being spied on without knowing. The other option we talked about was just instead of all this spying and having security spy on employees and uh, another security spying on your security, which is uh, costly, we would believe, you could just use that money instead to uh, increase your security within the store. Um, and what was the last question? Uh, mm. Yeah, we, we, we talked about like the, we, we believe that it's unethical and uh, some consequences you could face was the entire um, uh, staff would go against her and be like, you invaded our privacy and in some countries it would maybe also be able for the employees to sue the, the store because of the, um, the invasion of their privacy. Very good, because we cannot say it's wrong or right, because what is your belief then? Our belief is, is that it's not correct to spy on people. Okay, your belief, I will sum up as um, human rights. Human rights yeah. You believe in human rights, therefore you look, look at other alternatives. See, that, but what, while doing that, you are not following your boss, right? Isn't it? So what will be the consequence, you think? Uh, the consequences of not following your boss would, in the worst case, be a firing because he would not trust you anymore if you don't mm. follow his guidelines and mm. his orders. Um, but, you know, the, the, the other consequence is also, like, if you do follow him, then mm. you uh, don't follow your own moral and ethical uh, guidelines within really? yourself. And yeah. that, in that way, you're not true to yourself in some sense. So consequence, you will feel the consequence, although it's hard for you. So that is moral belief. You believe in it, situation is like that, consequence is like that, it is okay because I believe in it. But there are moments where your belief contradicts with the information for, uh, or your boss decision where you say, I follow my boss. So you let go your belief, your belief, that means your moral, and then you conduct. So the belief will give you conduct. The conduct will make your decision whether you're doing the right thing or you're doing the wrong thing. Can I say it's wrong if someone say that, hey, come on, it's okay to have the installation device. Can I say they are wrong? No, because we don't know their beliefs. Okay. Can I say they are wrong exactly uh, in terms of ethics principle? Can I say they are wrong? What ethics principle if you can support? Uh, you can say they are wrong within your ethical beliefs. But you cannot in theirs. It's like, again, it's the, the Robin Hood we talked about. Stealing is not morally correct, but in s some would believe what he's doing is co ethically correct. Yeah. And here we have the same thing. You wouldn't be able to say that they're ethically incorrect mm. because you don't know their ethics. You only okay. know your own. Right. Now, when it be that is a gray, do the right thing, you think nothing got to do with law, right? What if it turn out? to um, disturb the legal perspective. How can, let me rephrase. When you think it become illegal, you can do either way. You can put the device or you don't put the device. Now, when it become illegal, that one is ethical, uh, ethical or non-ethical, right? Now, when it become legal, remember we go to the ethics, uh, law and um, morale, now you talk about you, you we discuss about moral and ethics. Now when this situation, whichever way you follow your decision, we become illegal in this perspective. When you think? Uh, 
I would believe that there might be some law that mm. says that you can spy on your employees. I'm not sure. Uh, could be a law that says that. Okay. Right. Yeah. Unless, unless there's a law, a bigger law, uh, that uh, support the human rights. Yeah. Not every country follow that. Mm. Yeah. Some countries say it's okay because there's no law, so you win. Yeah. But if the country say uh, it's actually privacy law that you invade, then it become illegal. Yeah. See, if you are a decision maker in the business. You have to look at the legal part before you make your ethical decision making. Because ethical decision making is great. Do it or don't do it or you do it, I don't say you are wrong. Either way, if you want to install, it's okay. The minute you touch the law, it becomes company problem. Now you understand how you make ethical decision making? No one can say it's wrong when it's not uh, disturbing the law. Yeah? Number two, please. I have 20 minutes. Number two. Uh, so we believe that employees have the right not to be spied on and mm -hmm. it is against the privacy right. However, uh, we think that if, if the company had a prior discussion for conducting the actions and like having a poll and if everyone agrees with that, I think it would be right to do, to do the actions. Very good. Very good indeed. If they agree, what did they give? Consent, sign, yeah? Don't just agree with everybody. <laughs> we have to be committed. If they agree, whatever you put, then you ca they cannot bring you to court. Yeah? Just know, very good decision, number one. They say, look, there are op other alternatives. Why you go for this? So that is the decision making of business manager. What other alternative before you go to the harsh alternative? This one, very, very good. You say, okay, I want to do this. It's very important. Quick way of finding answer, consent. You clear. Okay. Number three, please. Spoke person? No speaking? Spoke person? No representative in court. How would you assess Fanucci action if you were the owner of the store? Whose interests are most important to this case, the employer or the employees? As what I asked uh, William just now, it's not William, I'm messing up names. Sebastian, Sebastian. okay, Casper, William, Sebastian, Nick. Nick, I know because Nick Jonas, so it remains easy. So, uh, number three, are you on the employee or employer side? I'll come back to you. Number four. Do you think Fanucci acted immorally? Spoke person? Immoral or moral? Again, no spokesperson? The best part of our ethic is no right or wrong. Say whatever you want. Hmm. Moral, immoral? Um, in our opinion, mm -hmm. Fanucci's act is morally justifiable. First of all, using the utilitarian perspective, mm -hmm. um, but not. You are correct. You are following the ethics principle. Evaluating his first action of um, rejecting the offer. So when he rejects the offer, utilitarian in the utilitarian perspective, it is morally justifiable because um, the greater good is the employee's privacy rights. So by rejecting the offer, uh, he is respecting the uh, privacy rights of the employees. Okay, that's your belief. You believe that utilitarian, you are relying on utilitarianism. Now, I argue. Hey, come on lah, it's your duty. You should follow Kantian. What would you say? Duty, obligation. Your duty is my employer. To me, employer. Why is it connected in So, go back to immoral and moral, belief. What do you believe in? 
go back to um, first role decision making. What they believe in? Human rights. They believe in human rights. So they believe in human rights. And you say, look, greatest good for greatest number, right? So you are believing in human rights more than the company obligation. That's why you can uh, argue on deontology. Although it's my duty, but I still believe in utilitarianism. So because I believe in human rights. That's why um, uh, Sebastian, I think, just now mentioned about uh, I don't care. No, William mentioned. I don't care whether they. Oh, Casper mentioned. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't mind not. Uh, uh, I don't mind being. Um, what they say? Fired. I don't mind being fired. I believe in human rights. That is the consequence because he stick to be his belief. So you are supporting. Say, why do I believe in that? Now I want to do my conduct. My conduct is ethics. My doing the right thing is utilitarianism. Follow greatest good for greatest number. It's for the people. Okay? That's how you argue your ethical decision making. Now, guys, what is, uh, uh, how should Fanucci and Kawaki handle the information they gathered about their employee? What idea, obligation, and effect are relevant to your answer? Okay. How would you think they want to, uh, how do you uh, preserve the information? So, based on our uh, discussion, Fanucci and Katowski should handle the information they've gathered about their employee with sensitivity, legal compliance, and ethical considerations. They should report the employee selling drugs to the authorities as it poses a serious risk. And for the employee to quit without notice, they should initiate a conversation to discuss the importance of giving proper notice. Mm. And if there was uh, evidence about food stamp fraud, they should report it to the relevant authorities. And regarding to the employee attempting to discredit Fenucci, they should just, uh, consider appropriate disciplinary measures based on the seriousness of the situation. And finally, with throughout the SRO process, they should prioritize confidentiality, protect empl employee privacy, and consult legal experts to ensure, to ensure compliance, transparency, fairness, and ad adherence to uh, ethical principles that should guide their decision making to maintain a positive work environment. Very good answer. You are, you are talking about processes. Yeah? Let me make it better when you, exam, you answer exam question, for example, or you're in a bot. You are looking into process, which is very good, detail. Uh, this is what you do. But if you are a manager, you have to come to a very simplified answer. The answer is that you say, right, Kawaski, now we have to do internalization and internalization. So the process will be what we explained just now. You know, go to a legal pers uh, appropriate person to investigate. So you don't have to take the action. That is the best decision making. You are not the expert. Internalization means you are looking to culture. Now tell, like what you said, um, go, do consent. That is internalization. Create a culture where people be comfortable with the situation. And then information, how do you preserve? Go by internalization. What are formality that you do in terms of a way of capturing information and keeping information. Very good. Number three, are you ready? Um, so we believe that it, um, she overlooked the moral considerations of like invading the privacy of employees. Panucci? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, because like um, she could have just considered conducting like investigations, like implementing stricter inventory control measures, or maybe focus on improving employee training okay. and awareness regarding theft prevention. You agree, Rafa? You are Fanucci? Yeah. Okay, I cannot say wrong or right, but because that is what you believe the action should be. Okay, bottom line, guys. Bottom line, you are a manager. Just now, the act shows that two person acting on uh, one is the boss, one is the employer. How do you make decision if the con decision is not according to your principle? This is how you make decision. Yeah, I as a person, I cannot say wrong or right unless they invade the legal. Uh, as long as there's no legal uh, disturbance, you are okay to make your decision. But you see how they reason? Always go back to ethical reasoning before making ethical decision. That's it. What are uh, the reasonings? 
go back to ethical principle, the one that I mentioned. I only give you three examples. Ethical uh, reasoning, yeah, your principle, sorry, utilitarianism, justice, and also uh, deontology, Kantian. Yeah, but there are more. So justify with ethical principle. Okay, then only you make your judgment and then you present your decision making. So this is how a manager works to present their decision ethically with the board of directors and the shareholders and the stakeholders, possible the authority of your companies, probably the government or things like that. Understood? Okay, done with ethics. How long do I have? Six minutes. I'm going to go super easy. Now, most uh, another element. How do you take ethics into the world today? This chaos world today. Huh? Can I switch off? Uh, switch to the to the previous PowerPoint. How do I make the ethical decision in the world today? Today, world we are talking about sustainability business, right? Model of sustainability business throughout the world. Three. You have to fulfill ESG. Three. Some countries already go away. Yeah? They are five. Okay? They include prosperity also. So, there are three. Why? Because these are the questions that your generation is going to ask my generation. I think we skip this. Okay? I don't want you to ask me. So, who gives you the right to torture the world? Who gives you the right to deforestation? Who gives you the right to dig the oil? Who gives you the right to deplete the uh, resources? So these are the questions the jun junior generation are asking us, the older generation. We have sucked up the economic value from the world, losing our head until we forgot about the S and the G. Now you are asking me this. I will say, okay, goodbye, end the class. I don't know what to answer. Okay? Because... Why are you asking? You are worried about your generation. What is left? No trees. Hot. Temperature rising from 1.5 to 2. Huh? The temperatures are changing. Flood. Disaster. So now, you face it. Okay? So, you have to do something. That's why you are acting, initiating, changing business model. Towards ESG. Towards being sustainable. Towards being caring to society and environment. So you adopt ethics, the one that you learned just now, making decisions. See the connection, the old and the new. Now your business model consists of ethical business model, where your concern is human. Yeah, Your act was always put in head, not the E, the S and also <coughs> the G. So how do you want to do that? Bigger question. Now, initiative. First. Act consequently, look at rightness, then live within the capacity of you. Take some, keep some. Take some oil, keep some oil. Take the forest, keep the forest. Okay? And have a system where you know your limit. Don't take 100%. Take 50%, keep for the future generation. Go back to United Nations definition of sustainability. Okay? So now, change from this model to looking at profit, the one earlier I told you about shareholder theory and all that, to this model, which have these four components, to this model. So you cannot have your company in this model. yeah. If you work in a company that have this model, you have to advise them. Change it. Three elements you have to think about as manager nowadays. Balance the three elements. Make positive environment. Whatever you take, give back. Whatever you take, I take 50%, 50 hectare. Give back 50 hectare. I, uh, uh, you uh, deforestation, 50 hectare. Now how replanting 50 hectare. Okay? So make positive decision and do the process. Look at the process. Don't think about now. Think about future. Okay? Process must be always thinking about the concept of sustainability. Pillar. If you talk about pillar, I, I don't got no time to uh, say one by one, but these are the model, the best model of business sustainability ethical decision-making model. You have to think about the economy, 
you have to think about society, never forget environment. So as manager, please go back to this and think about all the elements necessary to achieve the E, e the G, and the social. Okay? And then, this is your issue that you are facing in business world. The economic issue, climate change, air, pollution, whatever, the business, the social issue, customer satisfaction, gender, employee. So now, if you have all this issue in uh, the world, you also have the issue in your company. Okay? Start changing. Governance. So board director, audit committee, every citizen in the organization must change. And whose work is that? Your work, people. Because you will be the middle manager and the top management. Because you're all graduates. This is your level. So start thinking of this issue to tackle your business and be make ethical decision making. Okay? So um, that's the end of my session. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the class and I hope you learn you know, how to be ethical. If you, you uh, don't want to be ethical, come to me, we have another lesson. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you for the participation from you all. Thank you, guys.